Hello there. Good to have you here again today. And I hope you had a nice Easter. Last week, if you remember, we stopped at the point where I was pointing out to you that the planning I am talking about is not the traditional planning where you go from year one to year two and then you continue like that. If you approach it this way, typically by year five, many times you get stuck. But what I am sharing with you is called reverse engineering. Reverse engineering. If you remember what we shared last week, one of the things you need to decide is your planning horizon. Whether you are planning with a 10 or a 15 year horizon. So, whatever you've decided, in this life planning technique, what you need to do is to start with the farthest point in the planning horizon that you have decided. What I mean by that is this, assuming that you are 30 right now and you have decided to plan with a 15 year horizon, that gives you 45. What that then means is that the starting point for this plan is not year one, but year what? Year 15. Meaning, you are not planning for when you are 30, you are starting to plan with what? When you are 45. And how do you do this? Number one, I prefer to do this on Excel. If that works for you, if you're writing, I'll send you the template I've been modifying and modifying all these years, and I hope that can give you a leap when it comes to starting this planning. But what I'm saying is, you need to rule off and create columns for the years that you are planning. Did I hear somebody already sweating, wondering what? I'm going to plan for 15 years at once? No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Just follow me slowly and I'll show you. So what this means is that the first year you try to plan for is year plus 15. Then you come and do year plus 10. Then you come and do year plus 5. And pay attention now. You will now need to do year plus 3, year plus 2, year plus 1, and then year 0, which is where you are. What makes this interesting? What makes this different? I go back to that quotation I've used repeatedly since we started talking about vision. You can feature in a future that you can picture. If somebody says today, Timak, I need 5 million naira from you by December to achieve A, B, C, D, my first thought is likely going to be what? How much do I have now? What are the responsibilities that I'm carrying right now? What are my needs? What is the kind of revenue I'm expecting? How do I think 5 million is possible in a few months? But if somebody comes to me and says, T-Mac, in 15 years, can you make $20 million? What is likely going to be my answer? My answer is likely going to be a yes. Because all of a sudden, the far distant future liberates me from all the body of my handicap, my limitation, my worries, my challenges right now. That allows me to think differently. Not only does it allow me to think differently, if I now say, okay, I want to start from the farthest point of bringing back in, my job now is to say, if I am hoping to do 20 million a year, 15 in dollars, question, how much should I be thinking of hitting by year 10? Let's say I say, I should be able to you hit $10 million by year 10. And then, if I'm able to hit $10 million by year 10, what should I be aiming to hit by year 5? Let's say I'm saying that, okay, I should be able to hit, say, $5 million. And then, if I'm doing this in year 5, I can say year 3, all I need to do is to hit, say, $1 million. 
Year two, I need to do like 500,000 USD. And then year one, maybe I'm aiming for like 200,000 USD. And then year zero, all I'm trying to get is say 100,000 US dollars. <laughs> if you follow this journey, how does it feel? All of a sudden, my headache is not the 20 million. I'm now saying 100,000 US dollars. Now, let me dwell on this a bit. Assuming that, I now think that, you know what? 100,000 is too steep right now. Maybe what I think is feasible or realistic is actually $20,000. I can adjust these numbers all through this to still arrive at my $20 million. How do you feel listening to this? I am telling you what works. Like I said to you in my past videos, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. Let me share some examples of what I've done with this kind of plan. I left the university and I was determined that by the time I would be 30, I wanted to have become a child accountant and I made up my mind that I was not going to get married until I become a chartered accountant. That was number one. Number two, following this kind of plan, I said that by the time I was 35, I would like to have, I would like to have attained the role of a managing director where I will have PL responsibilities for a company. That was target number two. Let me stop at that because my director is beginning to wink at me. How did this help me to achieve it? What exactly do you need to do here? I intend in the next episode to take you through certain specifics. I will do two simulations. I will learn this one of money and I will do the one of academics. Why? Because when you see the power in this technique, you won't waste any time at all to get going with it. And I will be waiting here to read from you as to how much impact this has made in your life. So, it's, a, it's, it's time to go again this week. Always a pleasure to have you here. Keep it locked here. Make it a date with me next week as I land this life planning session so that you can get empowered and equipped to go write one for yourself and go after it. I hope I'm making sense to you. Like us, share, tweet, follow. If you're on YouTube, Click that button, subscribe, send in an email, let's know how you are feeling, let's know what sentence is making to you, and I'll be glad to connect with you out there. Once again, Timak is my name, and all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. Thank you, and see you next week. Bye-bye.